your host, John McDonald. Welcome. I'm visiting today with Representative Kathy Kelker from House District 47 in Billings. Welcome, Representative. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. Thanks for taking some time. Tell us a little bit before we start uh, about your district in Billings, a little bit about the folks there that you represent. Okay. Uh, I, of course, I'm very fond of my district. I think it's an unusual one. There are two precincts, and one is the lowest income neighborhood uh, in Billings. So there's a whole set of issues that surround the economics of that area. Sure. And then the other, other precinct is the, what we call the hospital corridor. Uh, it, uh, the district runs right through the, what, the two big hospitals in Billings. And so many of the people who live in that area are uh, in medically related uh, positions in the, in the community. An interesting diversity in your yes. in your uh, district. Yep. One of the things I wanted to visit with you about you're uh, heavily involved in this ten year uh, ten year commission studying public education funding in Montana. The commission hasn't actually met yet, but uh, I know you're going to be heavily involved in that. Tell us a little bit about the issues that uh, you expect to come up and uh, be uh, part of that. I love to talk about it because it's such an honor and an opportunity. I used to be a school trustee and I was on the Billings School Board when the lawsuit started. Uh, the claim was made that the public schools in Montana were not properly funded right. and, and the courts uh, sided with us. The last legislative session in 2015, uh, the funding for public schools was passed in the, like the first week that's the first time in history. Mm -hmm. There's a whole change there with the formula and, it, and it's working and I think the schools are very grateful for that, that difference, uh, especially the uh, inflationary money that they're getting. But there are other areas that we need to look at and I'm sure we will. I'm speaking only for myself, as, as you said, we haven't met yet. One of those issues is something called the Quality Schools Program. That's a program that started in the Schweitzer administration in an effort to address infrastructure in the public schools. Mm -hmm. Most of the schools in Montana, by far the majority, were built in the 50s and 60s. And a survey was done to see how many uh, buildings needed refurbishment. Are they safe, warm, dry? You know, very basic kinds of things. Sure. And the uh, quantity of projects that were needed was enormous. Really. So the legislature did address in one session and took a bite of about 10% of the cost of that back uh, need for infrastructure. But in the next session, nothing. Mm -hmm. And this session, 2015, not a dollar for quality uh, school program. And so that process is not working and we need to take another look at it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the Columbia Falls decision uh, mentioned that we have a tough time in Montana with the infrastructure. And so, tell people what the Columbia Falls decision is that you're referring well, to. Well, it's the most recent big case, uh, and that's when the court said, you must, legislature, you must address the actual cost of providing a basic public education. And that really hadn't been a requirement in the past. So that's what happened when Lou Jones and others in the legislature uh, worked out a new formula, and it's enumerates the various things that are costs like quality teachers, mm -hmm. Indian education for all, and now money is specified for those areas. So that's a, that's a huge leap forward. Mm -hmm. And then passing it not at the end of the legislature but at the beginning, that's, that's huge as well. So the infrastructure piece is still something out there. Um, another thing that we have to look at is when the um, 2015 legislature met no COLA, no uh, inflationary increase was given to special education. All the other programs in the public schools were addressed in the formula, but not special education. So about $900,000 was not awarded, again, zero, for the increase. And what happens then in the local districts? They have to use general fund money to fund the additional costs in special ed, because right. special ed is required, it has to be done. Uh, so that's a you know kind of a flaw in the system that we will that we will have to take a look at. What is the uh, at, at the end of the day? What is the um, goal of the commission itself? Well, the, it's it, it's on a ten year cycle, and what the commission is supposed to do is look at whether the legislature is funding public education on an equal opportunity basis. 
that doesn't mean that every school gets the same amount of money or anything right. like that, but it means that every child who's in public education has an equal opportunity to get a basic education and it says in the Constitution, reach his or her potential. Mm -hmm. And so part of that then, you're going to be looking at those different areas, right. including infrastructure, special ed, all of those different right. areas that, that kind of play into that. And who all sits on that commi on the commission? Well, uh, the commission is uh, made up, it's, it's kind of like the interim committees that occur on, on every, every mm -hmm. uh, interim. But in the 10 year, there's uh, half uh, folks from uh, the Republican Party and half from the Democratic Party, half from the House, half from the Senate. And those appointments were made, uh, but we haven't actually met. Mm -hmm. uh, when we meet, then we'll elect a, a chair. And, and there is some hope that there will be co-chairs so that really comes out with decisions that are meant to be bipartisan. Right. Be great. And any idea what the schedule is for the first meetings to occur? Uh, well, the first one is uh, September 23rd, and what we're going to look at, as my understanding, is what it says in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. What is the standard that we should be looking at when we say, is, is there equal opportunity? Does the funding allow for that? Um, and then we will make some decisions about what basic topics need to be discussed, and probably we'll meet for extended periods, uh, like a whole week, because there's a lot of information to um, to assimilate. Um, I've lived and breathed it for years, but other people on the commission are not necessarily in that position. Right. So there's a lot of information to study. And obviously it's considered to be a pretty important topic because the, we don't have a lot of these commissions like this. We, That's right. we certainly have interim committees, but we don't have any, uh, as far as I know, we don't have any other existing 10-year no. commissions on this. No. Yeah. Well, and, and the point is, I think, that uh, there's kind of a hammer out there too. If, if we are paying attention to that equal opportunity, then there's the opportunity to go back into court. Right. And uh, the, the uh, judges have been very favorable toward not so much the public schools, but the kids right. who are in the public schools. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's obviously a very important issue. We've been uh, visiting today with Representative Kathy Kelker from Billings. Representative, I want to just thank you again for coming by and spending a little time with us and talking it's about these issues. Absolutely my pleasure. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Charter yeah. Local Edition has been an exclusive presentation of Charter Communications, providing original programming.